We'll call to order the meeting of the Hanford Township Zoning Hearing Board of Thursday, August 26, 2021. Present at the front table, my right, is <coughs> Jesse Poynton, a voting member. My far Excuse left, me. Jessica Vitale, a voting member. To my immediate left, Ed McGargy, a voting member. Participating via Zoom is Bill, a voting member, and our solicitor, Bill Cohn. Uh, we have one case scheduled this evening. It's, that is D21-12. Before we begin, Jesse, would you please lead us in the pledge? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> <Excuse me. clears throat> all right. <clears throat> and Z twenty one dash twelve, Dana B. Hall, a firm of seven oh Haverford Road, Haverford, PA, DC folio number two two zero five. 0035000, who seeks a variance for provisions of section 182802D1 to allow an existing non-conforming retail use to be changed to a restaurant use, which is not permitted in the R6 zoning district, and a variance for provisions of section 182707B to allow fewer than the required 10 off-street parking spaces. Property zone R6 and located in the fifth ward. Okay, Pam. How are you tonight? Um, very well, thank you. How are you? Good. Um, uh, Pamela M. Lockman. I'm here representing the protestants, the Brinford Neighbors for the Preservation of Residential Zoning. Um, if I could continue the case, um, I would like to call um, Ms. Hall as a witness if she's present. Okay. It's when, when last we met, <coughs> you left off with Frank Tavani, right? Or, you know, we, had, Frank, well, we did the two experts first and then a, a number of neighbors. Okay. <clears throat> so, Mr. Kane, if I, if I may, uh, just to clarify where we're going tonight and how this is going to proceed. Um, yeah, the, the last witness, I believe, was uh, one of the individuals who had requested party status and then indicated uh, that uh, he was going to be part of the protestants group and so was not proceeding on his own party status. And what I want to, to focus on here, and Ms. Hall is a different uh, character in terms of, of what I'm getting to here, but when we get to each individual, uh, there's many of these individuals who have testified before, who have put in uh, statements before, and uh, what I'm suggesting to the board is that if any of these individuals who have put in written statements or, or testified before, that before they're called uh, and put up on uh, well, the proverbial stand to testify that we get an offer of proof as to what, if any, new uh, testimony is being presented. Okay, and, uh, and one item that relates to that, Bill, is the uh, petitions that were handed up by the applicant. I believe it was yeah. the second hearing. And so um, I did look at all of those. Um, it's, it's almost impossible to parse out, you know, which ones uh, you know, you would pull and which ones you wouldn't. My suggestion is that they all simply be admitted into the record. And in the, the exhibit scheme, <clears throat> I think we're up to A13 would be the next exhibit for applicants, right? So I'm inclined to <clears throat> admit those record marked A13. Wait. A, you know, the new one. I don't have the new one. Yep. Uh, sorry, with these. Oh, the, uh, the sorry. Applicant. It's A13. So, and I would mark them collectively since they were submitted by the applicant as A13. Okay. Bob? Yes, I would agree. Okay, Kelly, you have. Yeah. Would you mark, have Mar Arlene mark as A13? <clears throat> okay. And Pam, how many witnesses do you plan to call tonight? Two. Two? Okay. <clears throat> so the floor is yours. Okay. Um, so I'd like to call Dana Hall as a witness. Okay. Come forward. Dana Hall is not here tonight. She's been a little while ago. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, well, then <clears throat> um, I'd like to call Mr. Viola as a witness. Okay. 
You, you were sworn at a prior hearing. do this um, if you could help me out I'm going to ask for some of the exhibits to be put up the um, exhibits for tonight starting with p7 <clears throat> exhibit p7 sorry bear with me you didn't number them sure Would it help if I gave Mr. Viola one of the packets of exhibits for tonight? Probably, yeah. yeah. Um, Mr. Viola, on the screen in front of us, um, there's an aerial map of uh, marked exhibit P-7. Um, do you uh, agree that it shows um, the corner of 701 Haverford Road in Buck Lane? Yes. Okay. Um, does it show the, the house or the structure where the market and the rental apartments are um, right in the corner? The to the left of the building or to the right of the back? <laughs> itself right where it says 701 okay I see that okay and above that the house the structure um, there's a, a large gray area there's a shadow on some of it and then a lighter gray area do you right. see that is that a parking lot You're talking about the front of the building no behind it toward the 705 Haverford side there are cars parked there. I'm assuming it is a parking lot. Okay. And is that, uh, and it's currently used as a parking lot? As far as I know, yes. Yeah. Is that parking lot on both 701 and 705 Haverford Road? That I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming 701. Okay. Do you know where 705 Haverford Road is? I think it starts at the end, the uh, parking lot. At the end of the uh, grass starts right before the next building. And is that next building 711 Haverford Road? That I'm not sure, but I would assume it would, yes. Okay. So you submitted a parking plan dated May 4th, 2021, as Exhibit A-10. Uh, <clears throat> could we take a look at that? Sorry, we're going to be flipping around a little. Which exhibit did you I'm ask for what, day seven? Yeah, the, the parking plan from um, May 4th. <clears throat> Might it be a I, five? Uh, I believe it's a 10 because it was admitted at the last yeah. hearing. It came after the menu and the sketch of what the restaurant would look like. <clears throat> If you don't have it, I'll hard have it. Yeah. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Does your daughter miss us? <laughs> come back to another thing. She only misses Ed. Oh, and this is Ed? <laughs> uh, okay. Keep going. I think it's right after this. <clears throat> Keep going. Are we sure that wasn't A5 from the original? This is it. This is it right here. With the okay. parallel parking um, up top. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so Mr. Viola, is this the parking plan dated May 4th, 2021 that you've submitted? Yes. Okay. Who created the parking plan? My wife. Okay. Is your wife a civil engineer? She's not. Is she here to testify this evening? She is not. Okay. Taking a look at your parking plan, the first thing I'd like you to take a look at is, is the, the building, the structure, in the lower right-hand corner, the house itself. Okay. It's there. And that's the, the house there in the lower right-hand corner. You're talking about the building itself right here? Yeah. With the garage in front? Yes. Right. And your plan, uh, your plan shows an area between the edge of the house and the edge of the property. And I'm going to say that's about 13, 14 feet. Do you see? Like where the numbers 23 feet, one inch are. Okay. Does that show a gap between the edge of the house and the edge of the property? Um, so now I'd, I'd like it if we could take a look at the photograph marked Exhibit P-8. So here's a photograph marked um, P-8, and does it show the Buck Lane side of the building at 701 Haverford Road? It does. Okay. Um, does it show that the building is immediately adjacent to the sidewalk? No. How much distance do you believe separates the sidewalk from the side of the building? You mean from the building out to the curb? To where the curb, no, to where the sidewalk starts. It starts immediately. Right, so, so, so the, the building is flush with the sidewalk. How wide is the sidewalk? That I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, and could we see the, um, the photograph marked Exhibit P9? Okay, so here, uh, is this another photograph of the Buck Lane side of the structure at 701 Haverford Road? It is. Okay. Um, does it show that this sidewalk goes right up to the, the facade, the outside of the building? It does. Okay. So isn't it true that the sidewalk along Buck Lane is directly adjacent to the side of the building with no space in between the sidewalk and the building? Yes. Um, could we take a look at the photograph marked P10? Um, does this photograph depict the structure at 701 Haverford Road? It does. And does it show in the middle um, a parking lot? Yes. Okay. Is that parking lot mostly on 705 Haverford Road? That I don't know.
does your parking plan show parking on that parking lot? It does. On the left-hand side in particular? Yes. Okay, from, the, from where the impervious surface coverage starts on the left, going all the way to the back where the camper is? Yes. What's the, what's the distance between where the impervious surface coverage ends and where the property line is in the rear, for the rear yard? I don't know. Okay, could you take a look at um, Exhibit P11? Um, so, Mr. Viola, this is a uh, tax parcel map that was obtained from the Delaware County Board of Assessments this week. Um, do you recognize the intersection of Haverford Road and Buck Lane? I do. Is the uh, rectangle outlined in red with the 041 in the middle of it. Do you believe that to be 701 Haverford Road? I do, yes. Okay. Is there a number to the right of the 041, uh, 73.86? Yes. Is that the distance of, this, of the uh, side yard or rear yard, whichever that may be there? Uh, I know that. You don't know what those numbers are? Um, <clears throat> And along the street, along Haverford Road, does it say 73? Correct. Does that represent 73 feet, the, the lot being 70 free, 73 feet wide along Haverford Road? I want to know that. I what the numbers are, so. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if it says 73 feet, I'm sure that's what it is, but no, what, you, what you're looking for. It just says 73. So if you don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. And does the next rectangle outlined in red that says 040. Okay. Do you recognize that as 705 Haverford Road? I do not. Okay. Could we um, go back to the parking plan? Yes. Here's your proposed parking plan, and does it show a lot width above the word fence of 102 feet 8 inches? Yes. Where did 102 feet 8 inches come from? I'm sure we measured it somewhere. Does it? I mean, it's from the uh, corner property, I guess it would be 703 Buck. Or the first, the first house. I think it's, it's seven hundred bucks. Yeah, seven hundred. Yeah, I think yeah. Up until the end of the prop, on to the end of the fence. There's a fence there. Mm -hmm. I can measure it up to the fence. And where the fence ends is that seven hundred one Haverford or seven hundred three or seven hundred five Haverford. That I don't know. Uh -huh. um, the Haverford Township Zoning Code requires setbacks in the R six district, and so. Um, does your parking plan show any rear yard setbacks? I'm not sure exactly what that means, but these are all parking spots that were there previously. Uh -huh. We didn't take any way. So the existing impervious surface coverage goes almost up to the fence? Where number nine is? Uh, yeah. No, there's quite, a few, there's quite a few distance between the parking lot the parking spot and the fence itself. How much distance? Um, <coughs> guessing maybe six, maybe more. I'm not sure. Is it shown on that plan? Not that I can tell. Mm -hmm. Are any um, Side yard setback shown on the left side of this plan? They just go up to the uh, to the parking stone that's there, and then the property starts. At the last hearing, um, did you hear Ms. Kirk testify 
that the um, Haverford Township Zoning Code was enacted in the 1970s? I did hear her say that, correct. And did you hear her testify that there was a structure on 705 Haverford Road until approximately 1992-93? I did not hear her say that. Um, but I'll take your word for it. Uh, and that the impervious surface coverage appears to have been put on in that area later, okay. after this, well after the zoning code was enacted. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry, may, may I clarify that very quickly? Sure, mm -hmm. um, please. The current zoning ordinance was enacted in 1974. However, the impervious surface ratio was not added until 1993, uh, which would have been after the house was demolished. Okay. Okay, so and we're assuming that the impervious surface coverage was installed after the house was demolished. Um, but before the impervious surface coverage ordinance was enacted. Correct. Okay. Uh, if, if I could just continue with this for a moment. Sure. So therefore, the impervious surface coverage would be grandfathered because it preceded the ordinance limiting the amount you could have. Correct. But the setbacks for R6 were enacted in the 1970s before that happened. So the impervious surface coverage encroaching into the setback areas is not grandfathered. Impervious surface is not building. Uh, only buildings are required to meet setbacks. Buildings are structures. Uh -huh. um, things such as if this were a single family dwelling and we were talking about a driveway, a driveway would not be subject to the same setback regulation. What about um, a parking lot? A parking lot would be subject to other regulations, um, such as design standards, um, uh, other other things. Buffer areas. I, I don't know when they were uh, enacted or amended mm -hmm. off the top of my head. So while the impervious surface coverage here may be grandfathered, mm -hmm. this is uh, a lot in the R6 district, is it not? Correct. And uh, the use is not grandfathered. Uh, I'm sorry, the use is R6. The zoning district is R6. Um, and it's being used as a commercial parking it's lot. It's being used as an accessory use to a non-conforming property. Okay. Um, whether they wouldn't have necessarily needed, or that the person at that time may not have required, the zoning officer at that time may not have required a permit because impervious surface was not regulated. Uh, I don't know. I can't answer that. I wasn't here. Right. But so focusing on the use and not the dimensions of the impervious surface coverage. The use um, is non does not comply with R6 zoning. As a, an accessory use to a non-conforming retail store, no. Okay. And your zoning code defines an accessory use as something on the same lot as a principal use. Uh, it, it also does, I believe, and I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head, but I believe it also does include adjacent lots as well, especially for parking. Okay. Um, let's come back to that. Maybe we can sure. get a cite to that code because I haven't seen that. Um, I'll come back to this at the end. Mr. Um, Viola, does your parking plan show, um, is it labeled where a dumpster is going to go? It does not, but I could point it out to you. Okay, could you tell us where it's going to go? If you see the back of the building, it says steps. Yes. To the left. I'm sorry. <laughs> to the left of the steps is where the, uh, the dumpster will go. It's just a dumpster. So how would a, a garbage truck get in there to empty a dumpster? He would pull into the parking lot, make a left, and then back up to the dumpster. He would pull into the parking lot coming off of Haverford Road. Did, did you do any calculations of um, turning radiuses or anything with this plant? Uh, no, there aren't any cars in there. That won't be a problem. I'm sorry? If there are any cars in the parking lot, there won't be a problem. And most of the time, the dumpster, dumpster, well, dumpster company will be there before 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh -huh. 
Did you show this site plan to Mr. Terry, your parking and traffic op um, operations engineer? I'm pretty sure I did, yeah. Okay, but he didn't testify about it. Uh, that I don't. He testified, but I don't know if he testified about the, uh, the area you're talking about now. Okay, so you previously testified that, that the restaurant you're proposing will employ one full-time employee and one part-time employee and neighbors who want to work part-time. Correct. How many part-time neighbors in total do you contemplate? Probably one per day. Okay. And are the cooks, such as yourself, included in those figures? It'll be myself, another full-time employee, and a part-time employee. So how many people in total would be working at the restaurant, including the cooks? Two full-time, two part-time. Will your restaurant take reservations? We will not. Will it take uh, phone or online orders? We will not. Phone or online orders from delivery service? For anybody. I will. Okay. For takeout. For and from a delivery service? I will not. How would you know whether it's from an individual or a delivery service? We won't know, but I won't sign up. I won't sign up with any. But if and they, they couldn't do it on their own. Yeah, if they contact you on, on their own, you wouldn't Correct. know. I won't know. Okay. Are you going to have a hostess or are customers going to seat themselves? We'll have a waiter. Will the waiter seat customers or do customers seat themselves? It could be both. So there could be a hostess as well. Correct. That would be one of the part-time employees I was talking about. Okay. So... Looking at um, the interior, the front of house, um, where's your cash register? You see the counter, there's an opening next to the counter on the left hand side, two seats. Mm -hmm. Cash register will go in that area. So is the cash register employee sharing space with the cook behind the bar in that counter area? No, the cook will be over more closer to the end of the counter, going to the right. You see where that ends. Mm -hmm. And then where do on-site customers place orders? Someone would go to the table, or they can sit at the counter, and the cook or the uh, host will take the orders. So some people will have a waiter come to the table and take their order? Uh, if possible. Some people just might want to sit down on their own and do it. Right. So yeah. both options will be available. Right. Okay. Okay. And people who order their food at the counter, will, uh, will it be delivered to their table or counter? It will, yes. Mm -hmm. Unless they're sitting at the counter, it will be served at the counter. Is there also counter seating along the exterior wall? You see where it's kind of curved? That's inside. Yeah, is that a counter? It could be a counter, it could be tables. It's just a preliminary drawing. Mm -hmm. and, the peop and will those people also be serviced by either a waiter or placing an order at the counter themselves? Uh, not sure how it's gonna work, but I'm assuming the waiter. Who's going to bust the tables, clear the plates, cutlery cups, things like that? That's what our part-timer will be there for. One, somebody from the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And where's the food prep going to be done? Food prep will be done on the far right, across from the counter, and there's a food prep area in the back. In that area where it says 42.5, that big Correct. open area. Is that the back of house? That's one room, and then it goes to a back door. So, yes. Where's the cooktop, or what would you call it, a cooktop, a range? The range will go the back wall where the counter is. You see the five seats along the counter? Yeah. That spot right there, that would be the wall, the ceiling. Uh -huh. uh, the range has to come four feet from the wall out. Uh -huh. And where I will think that's by, uh, by zoning and by law. Where will the ventilation system go? That'll go right above the... Uh, right in that ceiling area also. Uh, and where will it be vented out to? Uh, that's something the architect's going to have to look at and let me know. Uh, either side of the building would be fine. I'm not sure it will be better for the building and for the uh, people in the area. Uh -huh. um, 
are you planning on having any exterior speakers for music or calling out orders? No. Um, have you signed a lease yet? No. So there's no lease in effect? That's correct. Um, and going back to the parking plan. I'm sorry, we have a verbal agreement, but nothing on paper. If that's we have a verbal for. agreement, but nothing in writing. Correct. You see at the top of the parking plan, there's a sideways number nine and a rectangle? I do. What does that represent? I think that's the number of feet from the uh, fence right inside the fence over to uh, the end of one of the cars, nine feet where a car can pull in and park, I guess. But if they pulled in there, they'd go right into the parked cars. <clears throat> well, no, they wouldn't. There's only going to be three cars there, and they're going to be parked parallel. They're not going to be parked on an angle. You think there's so I think that's just nine feet is from the, uh, the property line out to right before the curb. Okay, so you're showing then parking spaces. If, if, if that nine feet, if that rectangle, if the top of it is at the property line, you're showing those parking spaces, uh, 10, 11, and 12, going almost right up to the, the, the property line, correct? Uh, yes, but there's a lot of vegetation there that has to be taken out. So there is, some feet, there is going to be some uh, footage there that can be used. Might be another three feet, if not more. So you'd be changing the existing buffer? Existing to line. create, you'd be changing the existing uh, landscape buffer to create more room for parking. Correct. We'll take out some of the vegetation because it's just over and dying. And uh, if you saw the plan for the uh, for the the uh, restaurant itself, or the uh, uh, a fence there, we'll be putting a new fence in. Different, different. But th that area is not currently parking. You would be installing new parking there. New, new room for parking. I'm sorry? You would be taking out the landscaping and creating more room for parking there that doesn't currently exist. Correct. Hold on. I'm confused. The, the spots that are marked 10, 11, and 12, is that already blacktop? Yes. So uh, presumably we're discussing this, the area at the end of 12 as yeah. it goes to the sidewalk. Is, is that right, Pam? No, I'm talking about the length of the parking space as closest to the fence. Um, it, these parking spaces are closer to the fence um, than, the, than the impervious that currently exists. So it's just for P8. Yeah. Could we take a look at P8? So, so taking a look at P8, Mr. Viola, you're going to, is it your testimony that you're going to remove some of the vegetation on the far right side of that photo? That's correct, where the passenger side door is on the car. Right. So, so you're going to be changing the shape of the existing impervious to make it wider. Well, some of it is going to stay there. We're just going to cut it back, straighten it up, and, and make it look nice, make right. it look neat. And some of it's going to be paved. Right. No, we're not going to pave anything. Everything's already paved. It's paved Wait, up to the... When you say you're going to take out some of the vegetation on the right... Correct. Is that to make more room for parking? More room for opening a door, but that's about it. I'm not going to add any spaces. Are you going to add impervious for the spaces? Are you going to blacktop in more of the parking lot that's already blacktop? I am not. But it is blacktop on, on that side of the door. The blacktop goes all the way up to the, up to the vegetation. Um, I'd like to take a look 
at exhibit A6, and it's, um, I believe, and I hope I have the right one, the site plan from 2013, where there's pink marks. Um, Mr. Viola, is this the um, site plan created in 2013 by Catania en Engineers? You're asking me? Uh -huh. I have no idea. Do you know where, this, where these documents came from? I have no idea. Do you know why they were submitted with the application? Uh, not on my half. All right, Ms. Blockman, I think uh, we can move on from this since he has no way to identify these documents. Do you know what the what the pink lines represent? I have no Ms. idea. Lockman. Okay. Ms. Lockman. Yep. Next topic. Uh, that's all that I have for Mr. Viola. Okay. Anybody have a question? Jessica? No questions. Ed? Uh, no question. Jesse? Nothing. Bill Rhodes? Uh, Mr. Viola, I just wanted to confirm, uh, you know, if you, uh, you said you have a, a, a verbal agreement with the property owner um, on the space to the extent that you, ha, has your agreement covered the full amount of, whether it's by lease or whatever, of the currently paved uh, land that's adjacent to the building? Or, or let me say another way, has, is your agreement for less than all of the current paid land? Including the parking spots that are there now? Yeah, that, that's what I'm, I'm trying to just make sure I understand it. It would seem that um, council is suggesting that um, the uh, site plan that you have presented um, includes some paved property that may be on the adjoining property owned by the applicant. And I was just wondering if in your agreements with her verbal or otherwise to date, um, that has been for an area that does not include all of the currently paved parking area. Yes. As far she, has, yeah. has she limited you to any, uh, has she, you know, excluded any of the paid parking area from your ability to use for parking? She has not. Okay. Another question? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Pam, she's next. Okay. Um, I'd like to um, draw your attention, board members, to exhibits P14, 15, and 16 and ask you to take judicial notice of the Haverford Township Comprehensive Plan. Um, there is, uh, the Comprehensive Plan is, is Exhibit P14, and there is a page, uh, there are two pages that discuss Brinford, two or three, and one of them was missing but I was from the online version. But I was able to obtain it, and so I'm, I, that is Exhibit P15. Um, and I would ask that you take notice of the fact that the comprehensive plan says um, about Brinford, this neighborhood is one of the most diverse in the township. It contains an extensive strip commercial district along Lancaster extending into Lower Marion Township and office uh, extending into Lower Marion Township and office development along Haverford Road particularly south of County Line Road or north of College Ave and north of College Avenue. Uh, institutional uses in the neighborhood include the Bryn Mawr Center for the Arts, two large nursing homes, the Chateau, the Chateau and Bryn Mawr Terrace, a portion of Our Lady of Good Council Roman Catholic Church, 
the Haverford Friends Meeting House and School and a portion of the Haverford School. The neighborhood is also served by two parks, Polo Field and Preston Field, and a commuter light rail station is located on the SEPTA tracks north of College Avenue. Um, in the next paragraph, residential uses within the neighborhood are also diverse. Housing types range from single family detached dwellings on lots exceeding one acre to in size to row houses. Single family detached homes on smaller lots predominate, but the neighborhood has one of the largest concentrations of semi-detached twin. And now we're gonna to go to exhibit P15, which is the next page. Uh, twin homes in the, in the township. Brinford also contains one of the highest concentrations in the township of non-conforming uses with respect to the zoning ordinance. A 1975 study of this neighborhood by the planning department revealed 28 such uses which did not conform to the zoning ordinance. Such uses may be legal if established prior to any zoning in the Ms. township. Lockman, Ms. Lockman, if you're asking the board to take judicial notice, they will take it. Okay. And you want to make a written argument. I don't think we need to have you read the comprehensive plan into the record. Okay. Um, uh, okay. And then lastly, I would also ask you to take notice of the variant standards under the Haverford Township Code and the MPC um, attached as Exhibit P17 for your reference. Same. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, what did you say, Pam? Do you have another witness you want to call? <clears throat> Let's take a five minute recess. Off the record. Right, we'll resume the meeting at Half Township Zoning Hearing Board of Thursday, August 26, 2021. So, Pam, you're done with your case. Okay. Go ahead. And Cal, did I swear you? Uh, I believe in an earlier hearing. Okay. okay. okay um, Ms. Kirk, could we take a look at um, uh, the, well, the application came with an engineered drawing, which has been marked A6. Yes. Okay. Um, and is it your understanding that, that these two drawings came from a site plan by Catania in 2013? Correct. Okay. Um, so they were in the property file. I'm sorry? So they were in the property file. Um, she, pre she presented these to me. Okay. Um, at that time, there was a reverse subdivision being proposed, but it was withdrawn, correct? No, it was a, uh, there was a zoning map amendment that was proposed. That's why these, these plans were not in the property file. These plans were presented, um, I believe, from the previous owner to Dana Hall and then submitted with this application. Okay. The, the document on the left, it shows four parcels, correct? They call them parcel A, parcel B, parcel C, and parcel D. Correct. Is parcel A 701 Haverford Road? Yes. Is parcel B, 703 Haverford Road? Yes. And C is 711 Haverford Road? Correct. Okay. And parcel B, which is 705 Haverford Road, shows macadam and parking in the middle. It's not quite clear, possibly. I mean, it does, uh, it does show that there is macadam and parking on, seven, uh, on what it was, 705, or what it is, 705 Haverford Road, yeah. Yeah, 705. Okay, mm -hmm. so the, the measurement uh, of parcel A, 701 Haverford Road, um, along the left uh, from Buck Lane to the side yard was 705 Haverford Road. Um, it says, oh my gosh, 53.86. Um, the, what, what we would consider the rear boundary line of 701 Hefford Road, uh, 
does appear to be 53.86. Okay, and then it also shows 20 feet in the right of way. So, which is the number above it, the 70, the 73 and change? Correct. Okay. On parcel B, which is 705 Buck Road, the measurement along that same line is? I'm sorry, 705 uh, uh, Haverford. 705 Haverford, which uh, is identified as parcel B parcel on that map, on that map, I'm uh, sorry, on that plan. Um, and they're showing the same measurement along that side of that property as being uh, about 49 feet. Can you read that? 49.45, uh, yes. Okay. Isn't it correct that 49 plus 53 is approximately 102? Correct. Okay. So the parking plan that's been submitted by the applicant, um, isn't it true that it's showing spaces 1 through 9? on 705 Haverford Road. Bear with me, I've got a lot of papers here. And none of which are that. <sighs> Or, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Okay, so isn't it correct that now that we're looking at the parking plan, mm -hmm. um, okay, number one, it's showing a dimension along the top, the, the length of 102 feet, 8 inches. Well? Of the parking plan. Um, the two property lines, added, the, the two parcels added together in width are 103.31. Okay. okay, so do you believe that the parking plan is showing 701 Haverford and 703 Haverford Road? Correct. Okay, and it's just not showing the, the property line that separates them? Correct. Okay, and therefore the parking spaces, starting with number one, the handicap spot, all the way through number nine, those parking spaces are on 703 Haverford Road. Uh, 705, I'm sorry. Correct. Thank you. Is that it, Pam? That's it. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Cal? No? No. Who? Who created that plan? Uh, that plan was created by Catania Engineers. And when was that created? Uh, January 22nd, 2013. Uh, and it was prepared, best you know, uh, in connection with subdivision? Uh, the title of the plan is reverse subdivision slash subdivision plan, uh, but this was never submitted to the Haverford County Planning Commission okay. as a reverse subdivision or subdivision plan. So does it clearly depict the current property lines and parcels, or is it the proposed merged? Uh, it does show both. There's an existing conditions plan and a proposed subdivision plan. Um, it's a little difficult to read because what was submitted um, is not to scale. Um, it's not the full size plan. Um, but those do generally appear to be the property lines that, that are current um, as shown. So, <clears throat> okay. Thanks, Cal. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, no, but if I could represent to you that in 2013, um, I represented the Brinford Civic Association in opposition to the reverse uh, subdivision. Uh, plan, and it was withdrawn by the applicant. So all the property lines stayed the same, 
and what was proposed on the Catania plan never came to be. And that's all I have. Okay. <clears throat> With that, if there are no other questions, <clears throat> I'll ask if there's anyone present that received certified mail that wishes to testify. Anyone that received regular mail? Any other residents of Haverford Township? Okay. Yeah, oh, please come forward. <clears throat> please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. And your full name and address for the record, please. May I keep this, may I keep my nose out of this so I don't clog up my glasses? The mask or? I can't say yes, but. <clears throat> okay. My name is Joseph Betts, B-E-T-Z. I live at 930 East Railroad Avenue. I've lived there for 46 years and 10 years before in Cooperstown. My wife and I are retired <clears throat> teachers and I am in favor of granting the variance. I have nine points and notes. I had delivered uh, to you at least one document through email, and there's a second one. Can I turn it in now? Sure. Do we already have it? You know. I think you have one, but not the other. When, when was this one written? The first one. I believe we have both, but if not, um, we, we can certainly add it. I will double check. Mm -hmm. Well, Cal, we either need to mark it or, or not. So let's, we'll just mark it. It's easier. And Pam, you want to say it, right? You want to say it? Your glasses? Uh, just since it's Joseph Betts, we'll, I'll, I'll just, Marlene, the one dated June 16, 21 will be B, as in Betts 1, and July 1st, 2021 will be B, 2. If you want to take a break to, to read them, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Wait, let's, uh, Pam, can you hear him testify while you read that or? Okay, go ahead, Mr. Butts. I've uh, put my comments in nine different paragraphs. I will number them. Number one. Our beloved former commissioner, everybody seemed to like him, Andy Lewis, thought that Vince Fiola's small family friendly cafe was an ideal fit for that spot. Apparently he had been trying for many years to help get that spot back into public use. And I am told that he thought this was the ideal use, Vince Fiola's use. Secondly, the Brinford Civic Association never had a membership meeting or a membership vote, so it cannot be said that the BFA opposes the variance. I know that a group of those probably in the Civic Association hired the lawyer and bought all the witnesses, but it cannot be said that the whole organization opposes the variance. Number three. The traffic problems that I heard described, especially at the June 27th meeting, are present problems, problems right now. They should be solved right now. They should not be attributed to the future restaurant. If they were solved right now, if, for instance, crosswalk lines, another stop sign on Buck Lane, slow, children are here, there's a church here, 
there are bumps here. If something could be done by traffic engineers, there would probably well, be much less of a reason to object to the new, it would be new restaurant at the corner. Four, I propose that all those with an interest in this issue, all stakeholders, follow the maxim, harmonize all interests. The interests of those on Buck Lane, the interests of those in Brinford farther away, the interests of the property owner, the interests of Vince Foyola, the interests of those who would like a restaurant in what might be called a restaurant desert, that is, for a good check, good chunk of Haverford Avenue, there's no restaurants. If all interests were harmonized, if there could have been, I mentioned in one of those documents, a community benefits agreement, then this would be more possible, either with or without a variance. Uh, a lawyer described it at that June 27th meeting. Uh, I've noticed that uh, Dana Hall said that she would hold Vince to certain restrictions if this were granted, that there could be bargaining. I think Vince is the sort of person who would be eager to please. He seems to act like that all the time. I think he's someone who could be trusted, even if there was a stretch and he got the variance. Number five. There's a present blight evident at 701 Haverford Avenue, and much worse blight at the property next door, and I think the property next door to that, I guess they're 705, 711. Vince Foyola will make the situation better. What he proposes to do will remove the blight. I think he's very generous in saying he will landscape to make it better, he will paint to make it better, he will put fences, six-foot fences, both to uh, cover the not very beautiful growths on either the left side or the back side of the property. <clears throat> it looks lousy, and it is a Haverford Township statement, both to us in Haverford Township, that we don't care because it's been like that for ages. I know it might be the best if somehow housing were built there. It might be the best if the houses next to that were brought back into use. But nothing's being done now. And nothing has been done for eight or more years. The best should not block us from expecting something better than the worst that already exists there. If the best becomes the enemy of the better, things stay at the worst. Number six. I've read of a Philadelphia developer, I forget his name, the Inquirer had a series on him years ago, who bought up inhabitable, business usable properties I think a good many of them are on Broad Street in Philadelphia. And instead of putting them to use, renting them out, getting businesses in there right away, he kept them vacant and without maintenance for years and years and years until he got permits to demolish them. Is something like that now happening in the properties at 705 and 711 and to some extent, at 701. Is Hanford Township making it easy to keep properties like that that are becoming blights that are not used? Shouldn't there be either a way, a carrot to give to the owner to make those properties into something better, or a stick, a stick that can force the owner to do that? It seems to me that there's something missing to the law if that is allowed to be like that. Number seven. This is about Vince Viola himself. I was 
in my house with the door open uh, someday in mid-June. All of a sudden, there's a man and a woman at the door. The man was Vince. The woman was his daughter, I guess, maybe in her early 40s, late 30s. And they were asking me to sign the petition. And I read over the document on the porch. And I liked him immediately. He seemed like a decent guy. He seemed like he had been a success in life. It seemed like he wanted to continue his life's work as a chef, but not to get into anything big, anything threatening in its uh, complexity. I soon learned he's a celebrity. In his 29 years at Yang Ming, the restaurant won the award for the best Chinese restaurant in the United States the best Chinese restaurant in the United States. He, in the kitchen, was in charge of 15 others in the kitchen. He is a major reason for that award. Imagine that a year or two from now, he wins the award for the best family restaurant, family cafe in the United States, which makes all of you on the zoning board who made it possible, possible. I think he's a good guy to trust in this. When he told me he was one of 15 in the kitchen, he pointed out that he was the only Caucasian and that in the restaurant business, as was characteristic of him, he had worked with people of 40 different ethnicities, 40 different nations. I bring this out because at some point, whether he was in favor of diversity, whether he was accepting of diversity was made an issue. I think he's a very good example of someone who has handled diversity very well. He's low key, he's a family man. He has a very gentle personality, I think. He has been trying to please all of us in his objections. I would think he would continue if we gave him a chance. He has opened the sidewalk recently that was complained about. And when I think of a sidewalk that's impassable, it makes me wonder what's going on in Hartford Township. Because when the code officer was going to the house next door to mine, which had just been sold and had to have a new sidewalk, he notices on my sidewalk a gap about one inch, which is probably a half inch too much. And he said, replace these two four by four squares. Well, when I see the sidewalk both in front of 701 and the sidewalk continuing down, I wonder where that code officer has been. Number eight, the restaurant would be a benefit to all. It would be a place to meet your neighbors. There's at present a restaurant shortage, as a matter of fact, in the country. He can relieve that shortage. His two chefs, that is he and another cook, his two part-timers to clean, to wash dishes, could very readily be people from Buck Lane, teenagers, uh, women who have to stay home at least part of the day with their children. The employees would be able to park across the street. I went over there to see, and there's much space for many cars across the street, especially on property that might belong to the gas station, but is simply a vacant, uncared for <coughs> lot. He could make deals with those across the street in some of the businesses if he needed more parking spaces. He would sponsor little league teams if he were there. What is especially clear to me, I think, is that what he would be doing is very little different from when the market was open there. That is, there wouldn't be more complexity. There'd be a great benefit with the fences and the cleanup and everything like that. But it would be almost like having the market there. If the market was open there, it seems to me reasonable that his business could too. Nine, a comment on the zoning law. From what I've read and heard, the zoning law grants a variance only if the applicant proves hardship. Hardships are bad things. Where in that law 
does it say you can grant a variance if the community receives a great benefit? That is, why talk about it only in terms of hardship? Why not think of it in terms of benefit? That's the way I think of his restaurant, and a lot of my neighbors do too. Vince Viola's success could mean that the dilapidated properties next door in Haverford Road maybe are assimilated into the restaurant in some way. At least they wouldn't be uh, bad scenes, the bad scenes that they are now. I don't know whether they could be exits and there could be exits and entrances there for cars that would mean there's no cars on Buck Lane. I don't know that, but maybe someone would want to live next to that nice restaurant. There's already many businesses on Haverford Road, but there's no charm, there's no attractiveness to them. You go to those businesses when you have a problem. You have a picture that needs a frame. You have a car that needs to be fixed. I think it would be a great benefit for the township to grant the variance. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Wait, Mr. Betts. It's here, so we'll give it its proper weight. I'm sorry, you will strike it? No, no I didn't say that. Uh, any questions for Mr. Betts, Jessica? No questions. Ed? Uh, no questions. Jesse? No questions. Bill Rhodes? No questions, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Betts. Please come forward. <clears throat> Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, sir. You got? Yes. And your full name and address for the record, please. Uh, John Williams, uh, 730 Panmere Road. 730? Yes. Panmere? What would you like to tell us? Well, I, I sent an email today um, to the board and to Kelly. I just want to make sure that was uh, received. It was received and sent to the board this afternoon. Okay, great. I just want to say, uh, very quickly, first of all, I want to thank you for all, all of your time going through this, all these hearings on this, on this matter. It's, uh, it's a lot of work. I want to read from uh, section 910.2 of the municipality's planning code. This, uh, this specifically says, uh, I'm just going to read it if I can, enter into the record. The board shall hear requests for variances where it is alleged that the provisions of the zoning ordinance con inflict unnecessary hardship upon the applicant. The board may rule, may by rule prescribe the form of application and may require preliminary application to the zoning officer. The board may grant a variance provided that all of the following findings are made where relevant in a given case. Mr. Williams, uh, just so you know, and, and as I indicated to, uh, to counsel earlier, uh, this is a code section. There's no need to have the whole code section read in. If you have commentary on a portion of it, please make the comments, but there's no need to read it into the board. Okay, fair enough. I just want to emphasize that the Pennsylvania legislature has clearly specified that if a variance is to be granted, that all five of these these uh, you know these these parameters must be met, and I would like to state for the record that I think it is quite clear that none of them have been met, and so regardless of of you know the appeal of a restaurant and you know the things that have been said, it'd be great if we had a restaurant there. We live in a country of laws. And I think we have to follow this law because if we follow this law, it is clear that a variance cannot be granted. And I just want to say one final thing, point number three, that such unnecessary hardship has not been created by the applicant. And I do think that if there is any hardship here regarding the appearance of the property, I think we have to understand, we have to ask, uh, why that has been created. And so if we follow this law that specifically says that all five of these items must be met to grant a variance, 
it's impossible to grant the variance. Regardless of how wonderful the restaurant would be, we must follow the law. Thank you. Any question? Pam? Wait a minute. John? Jesse, do you have any questions? I have no questions. Jess? Ed? I have no questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, please come forward. <laughs> I have a mask on. I do have I'm a mask. guessing it's Doreen, right? Okay. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm uh, Doreen Saar, 748 Rugby Road. Uh, Doreen, were you sworn in for this case? Yes, I, I was. Um, in fact, um, there are some uh, issues with what um, Joe Betts, who I like very much as a person and respect very much of a, as a person, but has said, in fact, the Brinford Civic Association has stayed neutral in this case and has taken that stand because there was division in the neighborhood and, in fact, held a series of public meetings uh, for as an informational problem. So there was a public meeting, and many of uh, both sides attended, and Dana Hall was present and spoke on this. Further, we felt that this was not, and um, I, Gail Ferrali, who's president of the Brinford Civic Association is here. We felt that this was, um, this was not an appropriate time for us to take a stand. However, I think you can see there are uh, five of the board, four, three of the board members here, and there have been five of the board members present at other meetings. But so, four, three. <clears throat> and I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's moot, right? It's yeah. The Brinford Civic Association hasn't taken... Well, I want to point out that that was, that was a problem. And uh, I wanted to speak to the deterioration of the properties. In fact, what this use variance would do would give a boon to a person who has, in fact, let the properties go downhill. 711 uh, Haverford Road is now uninhabitable. It is owned by the same property owner. In all of these years, nothing has been done by the property owner. This use variance goes with the land. It belongs to the property owner. The record of the property owner has shown, in fact, neglect. So we have, and Mr. Viola. Now, you say we, are you speaking on behalf of the Civic Association? No, I'm speaking on behalf of me. Okay. Um, this was the, I'm sorry, the royal we, me and, me and, uh, me and Queen Victoria. <laughs> um, what the neighbors have seen is deterioration of all of these properties under the stewardship of the person to whom the use variance will belong. The use variance does not belong to Mr. Viola. He is, in fact, only a tenant, and as, as, as was testified tonight, is a tenant with only an oral agreement for this. So um, Dana Hall has... Um, so the, um, we don't have any issues with Mr. Viola as a personality, but that's not, Mr. Viola's personality is not the issue. A variance is not for him or his concept, but it's for, um, Ms. for Dana Hall. And the variance runs with the land. Um, so that I want you to, say, to see that in fact, um, I want to quote to you from the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development Planning Series on Special Exceptions, Conditional Uses, and Variances. Um, I won't read all of it, but it says, a use variance flirts with an illegal usurpation of the governing body power to rezone. Because a use variance per requests permission to use property in a manner prohibited by a particular a zoning district, i.e. a commercial use in a single family residential zone, its impact is usually greater upon the public interest than a dimensional variance. A use variance is often requested when the property owner claims his property is practically valueless as restricted by the zoning uses permitted or that similar uses to the one requested nearby. Even if the applicant's property value is depressed for residential use because of traffic conditions, of or existence of some commercial use across the street, such conditions have not been held to constitute a hardship when the entire neighborhood is affected in addition to the applicant's tract. The evidence offered by the applicant must be conclusive. And in fact, we have seen no evidence submitted by this uh, applicant which shows any hardship to the, resi the apartments uh, upstairs from 701 have been rented. Um, the fact that um, 
that that in fact, and the fact that she has not uh, taken any care, and as Mr. Viola testified, um, he himself he said he could gut for a for a small cost the uh, the the downstairs piece and put in um, what's adequate for that. That same thing could have been done for an office use, which would be much more acceptable to the neighborhood. Um, I think that what you see here is, in the, and they're, they're only sparing, and we see we're in a, a period where the comprehensive plan is being re revisited, and as fact, as Kelly um, herself knows, one of the things that's going to happen in this is that zoning, the zoning of the entire township is going to come under scrutiny. So that to take this and to do something that would, would essentially amount to spot zoning in this situation, particularly in the context of the fact that, um, that such zoning is going on throughout the township um, would be, uh, you know, would be. And um, by the way, we are not in a restaurant desert where we live. Uh, uh, Kelly and Roach has existed for 33 years, serves a very good burger. You can walk to it. You can walk to the White Dog. You can walk to Levecchio's Pizza. You can, the Wawa serves food. La Cabra um, Smokehouse is there. So we are not in a place without restaurants. We are not in a place without access to this. And the same argument that a market doesn't work in that place because of, because of the Wawa and the Acme is actually true of a restaurant because there are a variety. There are Asian restaurants on Lancaster Avenue. So we are not in a restaurant desert. So looking at that very narrowly um, would be a problem. And I think, um, and you know, the fact that the, the, it would be nice if the present owner would clean up this. And in fact, Andy Lewis has had a history of trying to deal with this property, including uh, talking to the, the minister of, of the Memorial Church of Christ to put his food pantry in that space, for which it was not, um, it was not appropriate. So this is this uh, you know this has been an ongoing problem, and I think that um, the the and as I think as uh, Joe Betts clearly pointed out, we need to take the owner of the properties to task for that, and not grant a use variance, which would not necessarily solve the problem. Thank you. Any questions? Sam, do you have questions? <laughs> Jess, questions? No. Jesse? No questions. Ed? No. Bill Rhodes? No. Okay. Same objection, Pan, as to the references as to what Andy Lewis may or may not have said? I'm only kidding. Okay. Anybody else? No? Please come forward. Hello. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, Happy God? Yes, I do. And your full name and address for the record, please? Yes, Euphemia Bra Mia Brower. Yeah. Mia Brower, M I A B R O W E R. I live at 123 County Line Road in Bryn Mawr. Doreen came to the close of this, but the one point I wanted to make. If there's a use variance going to the property today, there is nothing to stop it from becoming another Wawa or a McDonald's or a Popeye's chicken right on that corner and the traffic mess that that would create. So that as you think about this, it's not just a nice little family restaurant. It could very easily become something else and there would be no way to stop it because the variance had been given at a previous time. So I just wanted to make it that very clear how that would go with it. Thank you. Any questions? Jess, Ed, Jesse, no. Bill, Rhodes? No. Okay. No. You have a question? For her? No. Anybody else? Okay. <clears throat> uh, can I actually, I'm sorry, can, can I just clarify um, sure. just a couple things? I was going to do it. I said. Okay. Um, first uh, is just a 
little lesson on what spot zoning is. Um, spot zoning isn't a variant. It's when you actually make a change to the zoning map and only label one thing specifically by itself as a zoning district when it's surrounded by other things. So just semantics to a normal person, but um, to, to me it's just a little bit of an eye twitch. Um, sorry. Uh, the other thing is um, a standard restaurant is a defined term in the zoning ordinance. Um, and it differentiates itself from a fast food restaurant, which would be something like a Popeyes or something, a McDonald's, something along those lines. So this granting of this variance, if that were to happen, would not open up uh, for those types of uses. They would need to return. I think, I think that was it. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Cal. <clears throat> so, Mr. Viola. Um, <clears throat> since there's been some... Uh, question regarding where the area that might be covered under your lease for parking. Um, I'm inclined to ask you to just before the board even considers preparing a decision, ask you to prov provide a lease, a written lease. Okay. Uh, that specifically, well, it'll address everything, whatever your business arrangement is, but specifically the parking area that would be covered under it. Okay, I'll take there care have been of that. questions raised as to which parcel some of the parking area belongs to. Uh, but since your, your landlord, Dana Hall, owns both properties, right? Correct. Uh, I, mean, I suppose that lease would be binding, but that's for your attorney to advise. Okay. So <clears throat> at this point, I don't have any other questions. Did anybody have any questions? Jessica, Ed? No. Bill Rhodes? No, thank you. Jesse? Okay, so <clears throat> for the sole purpose of receiving a written lease that you'll submit to the board, I'm going to leave the record open, but testimony is concluded. Okay. So I'm going to leave the record open, and Kel, when uh, You actually, you, you have a list. <laughs> I know. I already have it in my pocket. So that, that would be on September 2nd. I, I don't know if it's feasible for you to have a lease in place by September 2nd, but. I'll contact her as soon as possible and see what we come up with. So let's say on the 9th, we have a hearing on the 2nd and then we have another on the 9th. Okay. So I'm going to continue this case for the sole purpose of receiving a fully executed lease uh, to our September 9th hearing. I'm going to accept the lease. You'll either provide it or you don't. If you do, I accept it into the record, close the record on this case, and we'll do a decision uh, most likely at the next following meeting unless we're able to do it there. Okay? Yes, sir. And feel free to submit it to the township before then. If you get it on a night that we don't have a hearing, you can submit it to to uh, the code's office. I will. I'll contact Kelly in there. Okay. <clears throat> Sam, any questions? Any unresolved matters? Uh, no. When can I get a closure? Right now. Um, if you waited another 10 seconds, I would have already continued the case. So, all right. Thank you, Mr. Biola. Thank you. We're still here, so hold on. If I may, and I'll try to be calm and be civil. And okay. I want to thank you all. My name is My Pam. Goodness, no, definitely be calm and civil. Okay. <laughs> Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, all the truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God? Uh, so help me God, I do. And your full name and address, please? Uh, Pamela Jean Sador, and I live at 755 Buck Lane. S as in Sam, E, D as in David, O, R. Okay. Okay, Pam. I've been in the neighborhood. You got me scared now. It is scary, yes. I've been scared. in the neighborhood five years. I was attracted to it, downsizing from another section of Haverford Township, and that was in Ardmore. And um, I was attracted by uh, the beauty. There is beauty there. There's beauty can be found anywhere. The history. I'm a history lover. Okay. And, uh, and it's a residential neighborhood. And I accept the quirks. I, you know, I love the music from the Memorial Church of God and Christ. I love that I'm by the corner of Railroad Avenue where I know Lincoln traveled twice on his way to be inaugurated and then again on his way to be buried in Springfield. This, and there's wonderful people in the neighborhood, uh, Clarissa Dillon, my neighbor, and um, Cecilia, just everybody. I've really just 
found this to be a wonderful place, and I miss Andy, as, as we all do. I miss Andy. Uh, I was just wondering, because I don't know much about um, township zoning and whatnot, but I was very impressed with what I read, um, what Lower Marion did in 2020, adopting their um, plan. And Ingra, Inga Saffron wrote a beautiful article for the Inquirer about it. And uh, there were key words in that, and it mentioned organizing density smartly. I live in a dense neighborhood. I thought I was protected in that it was a residential neighborhood. And I'm wondering, here I find myself trying to organize my neighborhood, its density, and its future. And I'm just wondering, just whose responsibility is it to protect this residential neighborhood that um, should be, it's not a historic district, but it's worthy of being a conservation district because of the uniqueness and the mill homes and uh, a lot of the cool things that are still there, different as they might be. Most of them are very old, and I think that's why people are attracted to the community uh, or the post office that is Haverford, PA. And as the longer I live there, the more I'm just, I'm getting very protective of its boundaries. And I'm, I'm very pleased with what Lower Marion has accomplished when I walk up to Lancaster with the beautiful sign that they put, Welcome to Lower Marion Township, Haverford shopping district or something. I just noticed it the other night. And I just it just reminded me of um, you know, the new zoning plan that they adopted. And they are going to address these conservation neighborhoods, these neighborhoods that need to be conserved for whatever they have in common, be it the age, be it the history, be it the architecture. And I would love to see that in my neighborhood. Yeah, we're different, <laughs> we're all different, and we have these unusual grantings that have happened over the years. But I'm just wanting, is it my responsibility to protect it? And I feel tonight that we've been here just trying to uh, tell people who we are. You know, we're a residential district and I feel that if we don't do something, what we allow will continue. I feel strongly about this and I wanna be there to tell my new neighbor who buys the new house because it's a residential neighborhood of what has happened uh, in our neighborhood over the years. And the Delaware County Planning Department said back in the 90s that um, there are areas in Haverford Township that have to be preserved, not because they're historic districts, but because um, they have merit, they have and they said specifically that my area, this Preston, Millbrook, Buck, it said that we're an area, even though we have Haverford College and we have the Quaker institutions, and I go far to say Haverford School too, I think of them as my neighbor. They might not be my township, but they're my neighbor. And uh, I just feel that um, we have to protect what we have, protect our boundaries. Very, very important for the future. People looked out for us a long time ago when they said, this is residential. And I just think it's our duty to uh, cling to our corners. We, we really do. We can't put up walls, but um, we have to cling to our corners and tell people who we are. We're a residential district and we're important and we need to preserve what's happening, and I'd like to see something on that corner because it's bad for morale. It, it's, bad for, um, it's bad for morale, and I don't want that to tell people who we are. That's not who we are, and it's been distressing because it's gotten worse over the five years that I've um, been on Buck Lane. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, Pam. Thank you to my aunt, my neighbors. And um, I sure hope we can cling to our corners and hold on to what we have in a very unique portion of Haverford Township. And that is 
quite the attraction, and that's why probably so many businesses and concerns and, and residents have shown up over the years. They find that area very appealing. And I'm not even talking about the Buck Tavern that they tore down. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about there's something very appealing. Some documents call us the heart of the main line. Okay. Do you have any so thank you very much. Questions? That's all. That's yes. just the way. Thank you very much. Jesse? Bill Rhodes? No, thank you. Okay, thank you, Pamela. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, I'm, I'm going to close the record now. Is there anyone else? Oh, yeah. You, you wanted to do a close, right? The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I have a few things written out, but as a result of tonight's testimony, I want to tell you that on this application for use variance, there are three things that immediately jump out at me as a regular. Number one, we have an application for a, contemplating a restaurant use and a restaurant tenant, but there's no lease. And therefore, currently, Mr. Viola has no standing. Uh, number two, um, we, we have uh, plans put in evidence that don't make it clear um, which lots the parking is on. We had to go through contortions to get that out. That should have been on a parking plan. and that. Um, calls into question the accuracy of the entire parking plan. Uh, and I was trying to demonstrate that the parking plan shows a gap between the, the house at 701 Haverford and the sidewalk. But then I showed you pictures. And there's no gap there. You can't assume that land is there. You can't assume there's enough um, space uh, going up Buck Lane for a parking space there. You, you need a professional drawing. It's, not, it's just not a professional drawing. Uh, and then the third thing that, that really jumps out at me is um, 705 Haverford Road is zoned residential. It might not have a house on it, but it is a residentially zoned property, and there has never been zoning relief uh, for it uh, for commercial use, such as a parking lot supporting an adjacent property with a non-conforming commercial use. I, I, you can't get around the fact that that property would also need a variance if, if it could even get it to be used commercially to support commercial business. It's, it's a residential property. There, there's no relief. It's not grandfathered. Okay, so now let me just go into some of the um, remarks I made. So when these um, hearings started, uh, the applicant, Ms. Hall, she testified about not having a vision for the property. Those were her words and also being in wait and see mode, hoping for a resurgence of pop property values. Also her words. And when you look at her actions with regard to the four properties, um, and you take those words, you put them side by side, uh, you see um, a property owner who has not tried to find a tenant for the retail space for the market. She hasn't listed the property with a broker for at least seven years, or ever, as far as we know. Um, few repairs and maintenance, property citations for debris and trash not carted away, sidewalks not shoveled, grass not cut, trees and hedges needing pruning. This property owner was not dealing with the property. Uh, and so let's go back to her, her vision was to be in wait and see mode and, and wait for a resurgence of property values. And that's what she intended to do. She didn't intend to continue that um, non-conforming uh, convenience store use. It seems pretty clear when you see what the actions have been. Then along came Mr. Viola with his idea for a restaurant and a takeout shop at 701 Haverford, and he even offered to do, to do all the work, all the property maintenance. He testified, all, improving the building. He even paid for the traffic engineer for, in support of this use variance. And Ms. Hall called it, quote, an elegant solution to her problem. Um, the property was declining in value uh, because it wasn't being properly maintained. Um, and the real estate market, maybe it wasn't rising fast enough, we're not sure. For some reason, she felt it wasn't financially in her interest to try to sell it. She never tried to. Well, here's the thing. A restaurant use is not an elegant solution to the neighbors you've heard testimony from. 
and who wrote letters in opposition because they want their neighborhood to remain residential. They want the streets to remain safe for pedestrians and children and parked cars. They want the traffic volume to remain reasonable, or at least at current levels, which um, I would not describe as reasonable. Um, they want street parking to remain possible, noise to remain low. They don't want odors from a restaurant. They don't want vermin from a restaurant from the trash bins. Um, and they want their residential neighborhood to be free of commercial activity. Uh, now, they can't do anything about non-conforming uses that are grandfathered. But this restaurant is for, this is a variance for a restaurant. This they do have a say in. So the neighbors in Miss Hall have very different ideas about what's best for 701 Haver Haverford Road. Our, and the experts hired by the neighbors um, say she's incorrect. The traffic's going to increase. You're going to have noise, odors, lights, garbage, parking problems. It's going to affect the quality of life in the neighborhood. So what do you decide? You, the zoning hearing board, it's not easy. You, all these hearings and all this information. Well, you got to go back to the basics. You got to go back to, to the Haverford Code. And what does it say about when you may um, grant a use variance? Um, and the code has five factors, and you have to find all five. Number one, are there unique physical circumstances or conditions, including irregularity, narrowness, shallowness of the lot size or shape or exceptional topographical or other physical conditions peculiar to the particular property and that the unnecessary hardship is due to such conditions and not the circumstances or conditions generally created by the provisions of this chapter in the neighborhood or the district where the property is zoned. Okay, what is, so here, let's analyze that. There's no unique physical circumstances or conditions with 701 Haverford Road. It is a flat, mostly rock, rectangular lot um, surrounded by similarly rectangular properties, um, which are all developed residentially. Um, it has nothing, there's nothing unique about it. The entire side uh, their side of Haverford Road is zoned R6. Um, there is a gas station across the street, across Haverford Road, but it's separated by four lanes of moving traffic that serve as a buffer. And yeah, there's some commercial across Haverford Road, but there, there's an, it's all residential on this side of Haverford Road. Any commercial that's there is, is non-conforming and grandfathered. And the code says, let those non-conforming uses die out. That's the intent. That's the plan. Um, so here, factor one. They don't make it. Fails right there. Number two, because of such physical circumstances or conditions, there is no possibility that the property can be developed in strict conformity with the provisions of this chapter. And that authorization, authorization of a variance is therefore necessary to enable reasonable use of the property. Okay, does 701 Haverford have to be a commercial use to enable reasonable use of the property? Absolutely not. There's no evidence in the record of that. Okay, we know that Haverford, that 701 Haverford may be used residentially because there are two tenants living, two apartments there right now that have been used continuously. It has active residential uses. There's no reason we can't have that they can't have an, a residential use downstairs where the market was. It's not like you can't use this property unless it's commercial. It, the entire time this hall has owned it, it's had residential uses. Um, there's no evidence that the applicant has ever tried to develop this property residentially. She owns these, this property outright. She owns the three others outright. No, she, she, there's no testimony that she ever tried to hire a builder and, and work with them to develop the lot. There's no independent evidence in the record that she spoke to developers about residential uses. She says she did. That's a self-serving statement. Where's the evidence that it happened? You can't just say it. You have to show it. We know that a residential use is, desi is desirable at the corner of Buck and Haverford because Lauren Cabanis and her husband just purchased a house across the street in June for $440,000. She's also on the corner of Haverford Road. This is a, 
directly across the street, 701 Haverford, has, that's viable for residential uses, and our expert real estate broker, Kevin Murphy, agreed. Kevin showed you that in his expert opinion, residential demand is high in Brentford, and that properties in the summer of 2021 uh, were lasting uh, 45 days or less. Were, were lasting. Um, uh, Kevin told us that uh, residential properties in the Brentford market uh, were selling in 45 days or less. Um, 64 out of 76 residential <coughs> properties sold in 45 days or less in June and July 2021. So residential use is possible for 701 and highly desirable despite a gas station being across the street. Um, Kevin also told you that the ground floor convenience store has not been listed for rent on a commercial real estate website since 2014. Um, and that the property, 701 Haverford, has not been listed for sale on a commercial real estate website since 2014 when Ms. Hull bought it. That's the independent evidence or the lack thereof, that omission, that she's not trying to find out if she has a conforming use that's possible. She's not interested. She just wants a commercial use. But under, under, these, under these factors, you have to find that's not enough. You know, your desire for your property doesn't mean you get to subvert the zoning code. Um, it, Vince Viola testifies he's going to gut the first floor of 701 Haverford and remodel it as a restaurant. Why not remodel it for something residential? We know Brinford needs affordable housing. It's in the comprehensive plan. Okay, so in short, there's no evidence that a use variance for a restaurant is necessary to enable reasonable use of 701 Haverford Road. Second factor, second time, she doesn't meet the standard. Third factor, that such unnecessary hardship has not been created by the applicant. Okay, so here, the, the gist of Ms. Hall's um, contention is that she has, saying she has a financial hardship leading her to seek a use variance. She's saying that uh, you know, she bought the property, she's not willing to, she'll entertain ideas, but she's not willing to lose money on it. She has mentioned finances. Okay, but we know that she, there's no evidence she tried to find a replacement tenant for the convenience store or tried to find a permitted residential use for the property. You know, so um, if she has a financial hardship, her lack of diligence in finding a tenant or a buyer is part of it. Um, financial hardship in and of itself uh, is not an unnecessary hardship justifying a use variance under Pennsylvania case law. Um, I will cite one case to you, Laurel Point versus Susquehanna Township, a 2005 Commonwealth Court case. Um, and I will have a brief ready for you within, I don't know, Monday or Tuesday next week. I want to add in the testimony. Um, I, I have the case law for you. You can't just say you have a financial hardship and say that that is an unnecessary hardship which should allow me to get a use variance. Not according to the courts. Okay. Fourth, that the variance, if authorized, will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood or district in which the property is located, nor substantially or permanently impair the appropriate use or development of adjacent property nor be detrimental to the public welfare. Okay. So both of the protestants' experts have testified that a restaurant use will alter the essential character of the neighborhood. Both Frank Tavani and Kevin Murphy testified that a restaurant will be detrimental to the public welfare. Frank, our traffic engineer, testified the proposed restaurant will generate more traffic than the former convenience store use and will generate more traffic than a conforming residential use. <coughs> Increased traffic on Buck Lane from a restaurant, in Frank's opinion, could represent a significant percentage increase relative to existing conditions. A restaurant on this corner could add 100 trips per day to Buck Lane, which is significant in Mr. Tavani's opinion. 
okay? In addition to our expert, we've had numerous residents testify about traffic volume and speed on Buck Lane, about unsafe pedestrian conditions, about one vehicle accidents mid-block, which total several cars, happened several times. Um, a recent traffic study in January 2021 by the Haverford Township um, Police Department found that Buck Lane has approximately three times more traffic than Preston. Um, I won't get into that. I think there's a flaw in the study, but I will just say the traffic volume on Buck Lane is already magnitudes higher than surrounding properties, surrounding streets. Okay. Kevin Murphy testified as a, as a real estate broker, and he opined that the restaurant will negatively affect the residential character of Brentford with increased traffic, street parking, noise, light signs, um, odors, and that it will be detrimental to the public health, safety, and welfare. Two neighbors in particular talked about how they're going to be affected. We had Hepsi McCalla, the nurse who lives two doors down, who doesn't have air conditioning. She sleeps with her windows open, and she gets up most mornings and goes to work uh, at a hospital as a nurse. She gets up at 4.30 in the morning. She goes to bed early. She has her windows open for ventilation. If there's noise and lights and odors outside from a restaurant, that's going to affect her. Lauren Cabanas, who just bought the property across the street in June, testified about um, her concerns about parking and having uh, disabled people in her family. Um, if there's a lot more traffic and parking and possibly queuing conditions from this restaurant, it's going to affect her use of her property, her enjoyment, and, and the value of her property. Okay. Last Counsel, factor. If, if I could, can you differentiate all of that that you talked about with the neighbors where you said just because you said so doesn't make it so for Ms. Hall to why these neighbors are saying things and this board should just take it at, at its face value. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. And I think we have to go back to the fact that the, the burden of proof is on Ms. Hall. Like, she has to carry her burden of proof before we consider uh, the neighbors. And, and she just hasn't carried it. Um, well, that doesn't answer my question. Your, your, your specific comment regarding Ms. Hall was just because she says that she had conversations with somebody uh -huh. with no independent proof doesn't mean they happen. Basically, you're saying, uh, you know, uh, her, her credibility is in, in, in question. Um, and then you switch over to various neighbors who are saying, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. This is what I observed without independent uh, evidence to support that. What's the difference there? Has nothing to do with the burden of proof. has to do with credibility determination. Well, you as the board get to weigh the credibility of the witnesses before you and make your determinations about who you whose testimony you choose to assign weight to and whose testimony you do not or maybe disregard altogether um and and that is that is for you to decide as a, as a quasi-judicial body okay next is you, you you presented some argument regarding uh have for police uh with more traffic on um Buck Lane than Preston. Is that in the record? Uh, no, I didn't put that in the record. All right, so that portion of your closing should be stricken, correct? Sure, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, next, you uh, testified regarding uh, the residential use of the uh, uh, potential residential use of the property. Um, are you aware of whether or not there are leases uh, for the apartments uh, upstairs? Um, at 701 Haverford? Yes. I believe there are. Okay. Do you know the terms of those leases? I, I do not. Regardless of that, whether there's leases or oral leases, uh, particularly in an age where um, uh, evictions are, uh, for the most part, on hold, um, would you agree that there is a burden associated with development of a residential property at 701? that burden being the existing leases? Uh, yes, I mean, you would have to take the term of the existing lease into account. Um, I have seen numerous uh, rental application, li rental licenses in the file and uh, that I've obtained from the township. And it shows that the apartments at 701 Haverford are turning over, you know, every year or two or three. Um, 
The last, the last question I have is, and this is no offense, you feel free to, to go on, is, is what you're arguing now, uh, you're closing before the board, is it going to mirror what's in your um, uh, brief? Because, uh, you know, the board certainly is going to read your brief. They read every, yeah. trust me, I've been yeah. with them a long time. They read every word of, of the brief and they will in this case too. So I'm just trying to make sure that we're, you know, managing our time properly. Yeah, um, I, I've only got a little bit more and I'm only giving you the highlights. I'll, I'll save the in the weeds, the inside baseball, this case, that case for the brief for your enjoyment. Um, Thanks. So um, let's take a look at the fifth factor, okay? A variance, if authorized, will represent the minimum variance that will afford relief and will represent the least modification possible of the regulation in issue. Okay, so here, is a variance for a commercial use uh, the least, the minimum variance that will afford relief for the property owner, and does it represent the least modification possible of the regulation in issue? No. A restaurant use is not the minimum variance that will afford relief, it's the maximum variance. You're going from residential to commercial. The minimum variance that would afford relief is some kind of more intensive residential or uh, some kind of, um, there are special exceptions under both the R6 and the R1 uh, zoning district codes um, that allow more intense multifamily, church, club, professional office, student daycare, they're listed there. Those would be the least departure from the ordinance. Going straight to a commercial use is, is the greatest departure. And so once again, we fail on whether or not this is the minimum variance that will afford relief. Okay. Um, I'm gonna ask you to assign no weight to the applicant's traffic study by Peter Terry. Uh, it, inadvertently used the wrong data set and it double counted a convenience market and apartments at the same time to make it appear that the trips generated are higher than they actually are or were when there was a convenience store. Um, it didn't account for the convenience store being out of commission since 2014. Um, he didn't visit the site before writing his report. Uh, his report is about a data set in theory. It's not about this property or Buck Lane. Um, his data and opinions are conclusive at best, and I would ask you to assign no weight to them, as opposed to Mr. Tavani, who visited the site, who, um, conduct, who, who wrote into, I can't remember the name of the professional organization, and clarified, you know, what, what codes are appropriate, what trip generation studies are appropriate, how do we count them, to try to give you a more accurate picture. Um, I would I would urge you to put weight on Mr. Tavani's opinions and not on Mr. Terry's. Um, there's so many things. Okay, if you grant a variance for a restaurant use, it's going to run with the land. So here we don't know what the term. We don't. There is no lease right now. There's no written lease. There might be one in in a week or two. We don't know what the term is going to be. We don't know under that lease who's gonna shovel sidewalks, take care of trash, do all these small quality of life things that have bothered the neighborhood. Um, but what happens when Mr. Viola is no longer there? Who's the next restaurant gonna be? Is it gonna be a restaurant with a BYOB? Somebody who wants to play music outside? Once you grant that variance, it, it changes everything forever, it runs with the land. How do you how do you avoid being a, a, an undesirable restaurant use on a residential side of the street? Okay, so lastly, I'm just going to leave you with a little fun Ryan on zoning, <laughs> leading tre treatise in Pennsylvania. Just a sentence or two, something to put you to sleep tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't be making jokes. Um, okay, Ryan on zoning section. 6.27 Supplement 2020. Use variances are justifiably difficult to obtain. It must be remembered that a use variance effectively overrides the essential use component of the, legislate, of the legislative adopted zoning ordinance and map. The judicial branch of the municipality, that's you guys, the Zoning Hearing Board, 
um, might thus invade the legislative power of the governing body unless it does so under the explicit authority to grant a variance in the municipality's planning code. The variances exist for a reason to prevent unnecessary hardship and, and effectively a sort of taking of property rights by application of a zoning ordinance to unique conditions. So, yes, the Zoning Hearing Board has jurisdiction to grant variances very carefully, only when all the factors are shown. Otherwise, you, you're sort of uh, zoning is, is a function of the legislative part of the body, the Board of Commissioners, and it should be coordinated with the comprehensive plan. So do so very carefully, very thoughtfully. Um, and I submit to you that the best outcome for these four properties is to wait and see what happens with the comprehensive plan that is currently being, uh, the discussions are starting, there's meetings in September. Um, the, the comprehensive plan right now, which guides zoning, says leave this neighborhood as it is. Don't it doesn't say introduce commercial. It says continue with residential. Well, okay, that's what it says now. The comprehensive plan is being reconsidered. Next month, it's starting. Let's see what happens with that. If there is an identified need in the community that is not being met, perhaps the comprehensive plan will, will recommend some kind of rezoning. We don't know, but it's that democratic legislative process that should lead a change in use uh, is more appropriate than a zoning hearing board um, where there's no necessary hardship. I'll leave you with that. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed meeting all of you. Pleasure. <clears throat> So before I continue this case, is there anything else you'd like to add? Okay. Well, with that, we will <clears throat> continue this case to our September 9 hearing for the exclusive purpose of receiving the lease, and then we'll close the record and we'll schedule a decision that evening. Not that we'll render a decision that evening, we'll just schedule it. We, we close the record. So, any administrative matters? No. Any minutes? No? Okay. Anything we need to cover, Cal? Okay. And with that, we're adjourned.